Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, the plain and simple study of the entire Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in the last days of David's reign and his life. Um, so we're in chapter 2 Samuel chapter 23, and he's going to give a review of um, some of his personnel, especially his warriors. And of course, one of the, there's going to be an interesting name that's going to come up in this list. Now, um, <clears throat> let me let me get in, it and then when I get to the the list, the first part is David's going to have a few um, words. Um, some call it the last words, but it's actually not David's last words. Um, or let's put it like this this is probably his last day words as um from a public address okay um so you um I, I, so let's read it first one these are the last words of david now again um it's kind of hard to how to interpret this only because in the very next chapter, we're going to see David. They're actually not David's last words, so they're not the last words of his life. You know, in other words, his last words, and then, you know, like for example, the Book of Deuteronomy, are Moses' last words. <coughs> they're literally the 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 last day of his life, and then the last words, which take a few hours, and then when he is done, when we get to the end of the Book of Deuteronomy, literally he closes off. Walks up in the mountain, no one ever sees the beginning of life. Now, so when it says here, these are the last words of David, it's not the last words in that respect. Because we're going to see that uh, even in the next chapter, there's going to be plenty of his words. They're not even the last, we're not even on his deathbed. Okay? Uh, so I, I'm not just understanding the, the phrase other than is it the last words as a writing. Now, his writing, as he's writing. Okay? But anyway, these are the last words of David. The declaration of David, the son of Jesse. The declaration of the man, of the man raised on high. The one anointed by the God of Jacob. The favorite singer of Israel. Now, you note the title here, the God of Jacob. That's going to be important, especially because of the lineage of David. Remember, Jesus will come through this lineage and then there are some prophetic fulfillments for the lineage of David um, verse 2 the Spirit of the Lord spoke through me his words was on my tongue the God of Israel spoke the rock of Israel said to me the one who rules the people with justice who rules in the fear of God is like the morning light when he's when the sun rises on a cloudless morning, the glistening of rain and spouting of grass. Is it not true my house is with God? For he has established an everlasting covenant with me, ordered and secured in every detail. Will he not bring about my whole salvation? and my every desire but all the wicked are like thorns raked aside and they can never be picked up by hand the man who touches them must be harmed with iron and a shaft of the spear but and that they were completely burned up on the spot <coughs> all right so um again How do we define the term last words here? Because as we will see, these will not be the actual last words of David. In fact, you're going to see many words after this. Okay, but anyway. Now, um, verse 8. Now, these are the names of David's warriors. Now, he's going to list these guys. And um, there are a list of what's called David's 30 mighty men 
Um, in order to even make this list, you just you had to be not only the best of the best, but add that a few times more, right? Best of the best of the best of the best. So in order to even to make this list, and, that, and, and here's the thing, you could have been a good soldier, a good warrior. <coughs> David had many, but in, in order to make this list, you've had to have some pretty impressive exploits. Um, so, and, and you're going to see that language in here, that these, these were some bad dudes. David himself was... One of, of course, one of the best lawyer. I mean, warriors. Um, one, he killed Goliath. Two, um, a lion and a bear. Um, so God used him mightily. So, like I said, in order to even make this list, you know, you you have to have been able to say, here are some pretty impressive credentials that I can list here. Not just, uh, and it's not even, what we can say, it's not even, um, um, they call it legacy. In other words, for example, Absalom was pretty. And he was okay as far as, you, you could say, this is an everyday guy. But he could never make this list. Now, like I say, at the very end, I'm going to show you where... I mentioned this before, but at the very end, there's going to be very interesting names that are going to come up. But anyway, these are the names of David warriors. Just a Bas, uh, Basabeth, uh, the Tam Shemite, uh, the, the, the Ta Shemanite, was chief of the offers. So again, let me just say this. Going to butcher these names, no matter how I try to practice pronunciation, I get tongue-tied now. So anyway, forgive the butchering of the names here. He said he wielded a spear against 800 men that he killed at one time. So this is pretty impressive right here, right? He was the chief of the officers. Now he's going to break them down. And, and by the way, in other words, if you want to be in the 30, then you have to say, okay, this is what I've done. 800 men at one time. Very impressive. Okay, very impressive. It, it would be hard to do that even with a gun. Okay, it would be hard to do that with a gun. All right, not impossible, but hard. Verse 9, after him, Elida, son of Dodo, son of the uh, Ahanite, was among the three warriors with David when they defeated the Philistines. The men of Israel retreated in the place they had gathered for battle. But Eliezer stood his ground and attacked the Philistines until his hand was tired and stuck to his sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. Then the troops came back to him, but only to plunder the dead. Now right away you also see that the 30 mighty men of David were mighty because of God's grace upon them. Okay not just human ability and strength. All right. Verse 11. After him was Shammah, son of Agi, the Herite. The Philistine had assembled in formation where there was a field full of lentils. The troops fled from the Philistines, but Shammah took his stand in the middle of the field, def defended it, and struck down the Philistines. So the Lord brought a about a great <coughs> victory. The three of the thirty leading warriors went down at harvest time and came to David at the cave of Adullam. And while a company of the Philistines was camping, camping in the valley of Rephaim, and at that time David was in the stronghold, this would be on the run from Saul. And the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem, and David was extremely thirsty, and he said, if only someone would bring me a water to drink from the well at the city of the gate of Beth, uh, Bethlehem. So three of the warriors broke through the Philistines' camp and drew water from the well at the gate of Bethlehem. They brought it back to David, but he refused to drink it instead. He poured it out to the Lord. David said, Lord, 
Have I never do such a thing? Is it not the blood of the men who risked their lives, so he refused to drink it? Such were the exploits of the three warriors. In other words, these these dudes were so bad that they actually broke through a, an entire garrison of, of soldiers, got a jug of water, and brought it back to David. <coughs> and David said, I just, I just can't drink it. Verse 18, uh, Abishai, now we've been seeing him, and we're going to keep seeing him for a while, but Abishai, Joab's brother, and the son of Zariah, Zariah was leader of the three. He raised his spirit against 300 men and killed them, gained a reputation among the three. Was he not more honorable than the three? He became their commander, even though he did not become one of the three. Now we know that Abishai, again, dude was great. Now watch this. So Benaniah, son of uh, Johada, was the son of a brave man from Kazil, a man of many exploits. Benaniah killed two sons of Ariel of Moab, and he went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. He also killed an Egyptian, a huge man, even though the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. Benaniah went down uh, to him with the club, snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and then killed him with his own spear. These were the exploits of Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, and then who had a reputation among the three warriors. He was most honored of the thirty, but he did not become one of the three. David put him in charge of his bodyguards. Among the thirty were Joab's brother Asio, Asio. I remember he was killed by. Uh, Abner, um, Elena, son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shema of Herodite, um, Elika, Elika, the Herodite, Helas, the Palatite, um, <clears throat> Ira, son of Akish, the Tokite, to the Tokakite, Tokakite, um, Abiezer, the Anothite, um, Mibanone, the Hushanite, yes, I am butchering them, so forgive me. 28. Uh, Zalem, the Olamite, Olahite, Mararita, um, Mahari, the uh, Nephetup, Netephoite, Halab, son of Benai, the Netephoite, of height, <laughs> Atta, son of Reba, the Gibbite of the Benjamites, Benaiah of the Parathonite, Hidi from the Wadis of Gosh, um, Abi Aban, the Arabite, Arbathite, the, I'm sorry, Arbahite, uh, Asmaba, the Bohemite, Eliaba, the Shabanite, the son of J uh, Jason, uh, Jonathan, son of Shama, the Herite, Her Herite, Herite, uh, Ahim, son of Shai, of the Harite, Elephite, Elephilit, son of Abishai, son of Machanite, Ali, son of Ahithophel, the Gullanite. That's kind of interesting right here. Ahithophel, remember he was David's uh, most wise man that in the end he turned on David and then ended up killing himself when his plan didn't work through. Uh, Hezro, the Carmite, Perii, the Arbite, Ega, son of Nathan from Zubah, Vini, the Gedite, Zilik, the Amorite, uh, Nahari, the Berite, uh, the armor bearer for Joab, son of Zeriah, uh, Z um, uh, Zariah, Ara, the Ithrite, Carmid, the Thibite, 
and Uriah the Hittite. There were 37 in all. Now, notice Uriah the Hittite was one of David's 30 men. Remember, Uriah was the husband of Bathsheba, whom David killed. In fact, David slept with his wife and then committed adultery. And then David tried to cover his sin by bringing this most decorated soldier off of the battlefield. Now remember he was one of David's 30. This was a terrible sin of course that David never really recovered from. We just finished the last several uh, chapters of his David's turmoil, right? But it goes back to one of these things what he did to Uriah. Now, this is interesting because Uriah was a very faithful soldier um, and he was out being in service to David. David saw his wife, a very beautiful woman. There's a lot of stories too and whether or not if Bathsheba, how guilty Bathsheba was of that. She was guilty in the sense that she committed adultery, without a doubt. Some suggest she might have seduced David, but the fault was strictly David's. And then after, because um, it said that she was bathing after her purification, so after her administration period, monthly period, when she was ripe for pregnancy, David hit it and she got pregnant. All right, so then he tries to cover his sin by bringing um, uh, Uriah home. Now, again, when you're in sin like this, it's just plain stupid because uh, David doesn't think that people want to be able to say, David, that boy looked like you. That baby looks like you, whether it's a boy or a girl. That looks like you. It doesn't look like Uriah. Um, so he tried to bring him home to sleep with his wife. Now, you know, from a man's point, point, you're probably thinking, man, he's got a fine wife. Obviously, he's going to come home and sleep with his wife. But no, Uriah was faithful. And thus Uriah said, well, I can't. My, my brothers are out battling. So he just kind of got drunk and slept at the gate with the men. And man, David was like, he tried it again the next night, wouldn't. So finally, David wrote a letter. And this is kind of interesting because he writes this letter to Joab. And you want to see why he has all the problems with Joab. He writes this letter to Joab and says, When you get into the heat of the battle, put Uriah out front and then you all kind of draw back. And that's exactly what happened. Except with Joab, he probably killed a few other men. And we don't have the story on that. We just know that it happened. I'm going to surmise that Joy, I probably didn't like the guys in any way. So God said, I'm going to judge you for that death. Murder, adultery, the whole bit. Right? Um, and what was interesting about Uriah was that he was so faithful that he carried his own death sentence. Now think about this. He carried his death sentence when the letter that David had given him. Didn't open the letter, but you know, and um, carried it faithfully and then was executed, murdered. And of course, God judged David for that. But those were David's, those were David's mighty men. Like I said, you had to be bad dudes to get into uh, that list there. 37 of them. All right, guys. Um, chapter 24 in the next study, I'll see you then.